SIPR stands for Space-Based Infrared System, so it's a constellation of satellites that basically detect and track missile launches across the world. You know, SIPRs worldwide is always there. It's the persistent infrared detection, looking for missile launches to protect our troops in the field and to protect the homeland. And, you know, when you go home and you go to a, a wedding and you talk about, hey, what do you do? It's like, well, I'm protecting us right now. It's pretty cool. subcontract organization, we are able to be excited about and involved in each, each phase. So we're not limited to one piece. We get to be involved in each phase through completion and through the end of the life of that hardware. So working out of the chief engineer's office, I get the opportunity to work in all phases. Uh, that's design, assembly, slash build, test, integration, um, and a little bit of flight. Um, and my focus is anomaly investigation and resolution. As a system test engineer, one of my job functions is to ensure that flight software correctly computes and issue uh, appropriate commands to uh, thrusters and reaction wheels to correctly orient the spacecraft and maintain correct position in the orbit. The things that get me really excited are getting to see the things that we actually build and, and work on. Um, so a lot of the tours, um, going to see some of our operational facilities in Colorado, um, where we actually fly the satellites from, that's always exciting. Getting to see the satellites in the highway is always a highlight. I get great satisfaction in working with um, our suppliers, our internal Lockheed folks, our aerospace community, and our customer community. Um, I find that every challenge that we face is not, it's a team effort, and that, that, that brings the biggest joy uh, for me. One of the most interesting part of being a system test engineer is that you get to work with the vehicle from the beginning to the end. So you actually get to watch the vehicle take shape from the beginning, which is just a shell, to the end, which is the final product. Yes, designing things for space is a own unique challenge. You have the radiation environment, you have the extreme thermal environment, all that stuff. Uh, from my perspective though, the thing that's most challenging is you have to get it right the first time. The challenge from a subcontract management perspective um, comes to ensuring that all of the hardware is built correctly, tested correctly, and is going to function correctly in space. You can't go up into space and fix your hardware if something breaks. I'll be working the launch from here in Sunnyvale in our flight operations support facility. For the first month or so, we have what's called launch and early on over test, which is basically check out of all the basic functionality of the satellite, ensuring it's safe and working properly. Uh, as part of that, we do 24-7 um, shift coverage on three eight-hour rotating shifts. So launches are an interesting point in the program. They're the culmination of a whole lot of effort, and they're also the beginning of the life of that satellite on orbit. Um, they're exciting because all this work leading up to this one moment, and it goes. And then they're also bittersweet because now everything that you worked on, all the hardware you delivered, all the team teammates that you worked with, it's now off the ground and gone. Um, they get to the end, and you can see that smoke coming at the bottom and it blasts off and you get goosebumps and chills and you're so excited about the fact that you had a part in making this happen.